The 1990s shoegaze movement in London couldn't have been more different from the other more aggressive subgenres of alternative rock that emerged around the same time, but that didn't make the genre any less influential. Bands like Chapter House, Ride, Slow Dive, and Lush have gone on to influence several bands that followed with their distinctly washed out heavy guitar feedback and dreamily obscured vocals that can be traced back to dream pop and groups like the Cocteau Twins and the Jesus and Mary Chain. But the single most celebrated band that would end up becoming the face of shoegaze after the release of their iconic 1991 album Loveless is Dublin-based alternative rock outfit My Bloody Valentine. Frontman Kevin Shields enjoys an almost genius-like status for pioneering the influential sound of shoegaze with his legendary rearranging of guitar feedback and effects. But if there's anybody who is just as deserving of the recognition for putting shoegaze on the map with her voice and mystical stage presence, it is his fellow bandmate, vocalist, and multi-instrumentalist Belinda Butcher. Belinda Butcher grew up in Derbyshire, England, in a small conservative hamlet known as Golden Valley. She grew up on northern soul music and goth rock, listening to records on a portable gramophone that belonged to one of her friends. I loved Northern Soul and used to go to all dayers since I was too young to go to clubs. You know they had the all-nighters at Wigan Casino. That was the place to go. There were a couple of places, Nottingham Palais and Matlock Bath, who arranged all dayers instead. You went there in the morning, listened to music and danced all day. My mother thought I was up in the clouds. I never watched the news or read the papers. It was like I lived in another era. Everybody was into punk, and I was living in the 20s and 30s. As a teenager, Butcher moved to London where she studied dance full-time at the Trinity Le Bon Conservatory and went to gigs to see bands like Bauhaus, the Sisters of Mercy, and the Birthday Party. Unfortunately, Butcher sadly had to quit dance after developing a liver disease as a result of a chronic urinary infection that her doctors would not take seriously or treat properly. After dropping out of school, she worked as a nanny for a French family and would later end up moving to France and having her first child. Butcher auditioned for My Bloody Valentine in 1987, singing Dolly Parton's The Bargain Store, and she ended up getting the gig. Her first proper record with the band was their 1989 debut album, Isn't Anything, a truly disorienting and otherworldly-sounding album. Kevin Shields' layered and textured instrumentals would undoubtedly go on to provide the blueprint for every shoegaze album that followed, but Butcher's sleepy, deadpan vocal deliveries and cadences would go on to be just as influential. Her voice blended beautifully with Shields' guitar work. No more is this apparent than on the dreamlike chorus of the song Lose My Breath, where we hear Butcher's signature ooze. On the song No More Sorry, Butcher had sung about surviving her abusive ex-partner who had also fathered her child. According to Butcher, she would normally write from information she had gathered from her dreams, since she usually had to record after waking up, which had largely influenced her sound when recording. Often when we do vocals, it's 7.30 in the morning. I've usually just fallen asleep and have to be woken up to sing. I'm usually trying to remember what I've been dreaming about when I'm singing. My Bloody Valentine's second full-length album and magnum opus, Loveless, took three years to complete, and the band experimented so much that they almost caused their label, Creation Records, to go bankrupt. But it was certainly time well spent. Butcher is the highlight of several moments on the album. Her dreamy vocals contrasted with the punishing wall of feedback and distortion on the opening track Only Shallow will continue to blow minds for generations.
When My Bloody Valentine went on hiatus, Butcher continued to record music, collaborating with bands like Collapsed Lung, Dinosaur Jr., and The Jesus and Mary Chain. She rejoined My Bloody Valentine in 2007, and after 22 years, My Bloody Valentine had finally released their long-awaited third album in 2013 and had begun to tour again. There is not much accessible information about Butcher out there, as she is much more guarded than most artists. And it doesn't necessarily matter either. It shows that you can still be in the shadows and have your influence remain just as strong and ever-present as it ever was. There are several artists who cite her as an influence, including indie rock artist and matador signee Lindsay Jordan from Snail Mail. She's this huge figure in, in, in my songwriting and in my life. To me, a big part of what makes My Bloody Valentine special is the sense of androgyny, this kind of trade-off between aggression and sensitivity and the fact that they kind of meet at the middle. It's really beautiful. Butcher is incredibly special to so many people in her audience because she has always been authentic to herself. She was always off doing her own thing when other people were busy following what was popular in the zeitgeist at the time. Shoegaze was not necessarily the most popular or profitable genre of the 90s, but it was certainly one of the most influential. It is no coincidence that all of My Bloody Valentine's most critically acclaimed projects also happen to be the ones with Belinda on them. Kevin Shields' incredibly innovative sound may have shaped the band, but Belinda's voice was the backbone, and it's way overdue that we give this woman her flowers.